Hello friends, welcome to engineering tutorial. So we will continue our discussion with the subject of electrical and electronics measurement. In the previous video, uh, we discussed about the basic introductory concepts related to measurement. So in this video, we are going to take our discussion forward and we will discuss about the various types of measurement process okay the measurement techniques and on what basis we are going to categorize the various measurement process okay so the classification of measurement so we can do it in various ways so here we have categorized them in three ways okay first the method of comparison now we know the basic definition of measurement in the previous video we discussed that measurement basically involves comparing an unknown quantity an unknown variable unknown signal okay and comparing it with a standard a reference okay of known value and this comparison happens in the instrument the device the apparatus so the method of comparison okay we can categorize the measurement on the basis of that then the number of stages or conversions involved now the measurement systems they will employ various signal conversion elements such as sensors transducers signal conditioners okay signal processing elements then output uh, display elements so at each of these stages okay each of these blocks the basic measurement system it will it will consist of these elements sensors transducers signal conditioners signal processors then the final output or readout element so at each of these blocks signal conversion will take place signal will be converted from one form to another basically as we are into electrical and electronics measurement and instrumentation basically the conversion will be from non electrical type to electrical type for example uh, force or pressure if we want to measure it and to uh, use it in a electrical or electronics apparatus then we have to convert it into voltage or current form so for that we will use various sensors and transducers uh, such as uh, strain gauge or we will use um, LVDT which will convert the force into displacement then that displacement will be converted into voltage or a certain amount of current then we will amplify it then we will filter out the various things so all of these things they will employ various blocks so the number of such blocks or the number of such stages or the number of such conversions they also form one category of measurement then on the basis of contact so here whether the apparatus or the instrument is touching the uh, signal variable or not so on the basis of contact also we can categorize so we'll discuss them one by one in this video first is the method of comparison so method of comparison again can be divided into two categories direct comparison and indirect comparison so direct comparison as i said i used a particular example in the previous video that measurement essentially means comparing unknown quantity with known quantity so in the direct comparison the unknown parameter the parameter or the quantity which we want to measure be it length or mass or time it is directly compared with the reference standard okay one of the most simple examples is which i used the weighing scale the old in the, in the old days where we the the shopkeeper used to have a weighing scale on one side he used to have fixed weights 
of various values such as 1 kg, 500 grams, 250 grams. He used to put them on one side. He used to put the vegetables or the groceries or whatever things which we want to buy on the other side. And he used to balance the needle on the top. And when the needle used to be balanced, it means the groceries or the vegetables, it is the weight of the, the, the weight of that uh, thing is matching on the other side with the other side so that is a very simple example of direct comparison other thing is the measurement of length suppose we draw a line and we want to measure its length then we used to uh, put a scale on it from one point to other and we used to measure the length whatever centimeters it is so these are examples of uh, direct comparison also if you look at the clock and the, you count the number of ticks okay of the second clock and you set a particular time and you count the number of ticks and stop at a particular instant then the number of ticks of that clock it is it, it gives you the time in seconds or minutes whatever you want so these are examples of direct comparison you are comparing the unknown parameter directly with the standard difference value Indirect comparison also another important thing this method is not always accurate the accuracy of this method is questionable okay so it is not used that much most of the measurement apparatus or instruments they employ indirect comparison indirect comparison basically involves the use of signal conversion elements signal conditioner signal processors output readout elements all of that so in the indirect comparison what happens the measurement or the parameter which we want to measure is compared with another quantity which has some relation with it so basically the it involves a particular stage where energy conversion takes place it means the physical quantity or whatever measuring variable it is converted into some other form then it is compared with that that converted value is compared with the reference or standard for example let us say we have we want to measure temperature the various uh, measurement systems which are used for the measurement of temperatures they will employ sensors or transducers such as RTD resistance temperature detector thermistor thermocouple etc so in RTD and thermistor we have already discussed them in the sensors transducer section you can check out these videos there so in the RTD and thermistor the temperature is related with resistance a change in temperature causes a change in the resistance of RTD and thermistor so temperature is getting converted into resistance then in the signal conditioning stage we can employ a voltage divider circuit or we can use a bridge circuit to convert that change in resistance into voltage or current then we can perform signal conditioning on that voltage or current we, have, we can amplify it we can filter out keep it within a certain frequency range and we can do a lot of things so that we get an output which is comprehensible so this is an example of indirect comparison the temperature is getting converted into resistance then the resistance is getting converted into voltage or current and then we can see the value thermocouple in thermocouple which is based on the thermoelectric effect the temperature change on both ends of the thermocouple it produces a certain change in potential electric potential it produces a potential difference so here the temperature change is getting converted into voltage change so these are the various methods of indirect comparison okay so you understand the difference between direct comparison and indirect comparison so then is the second the number of stages or conversions involved so this uh, thing can be again uh, divided into three ways three categories first one is primary measurement the second one is the secondary measurement the third one is the tertiary measurement 
so primary measurement essentially is the direct comparison it is same as the primary measurement here the quantity the unknown parameter it is directly compared with the reference standard same examples the weighing scale the length measurement with the help of uh, uh, the scale which we used to have then counting the time with the help of the number of ticks of clock so primary measurement and direct comparison they are the same thing then comes secondary measurement now the secondary and tertiary measurement they are actually indirect comparison in a certain way okay but there is a little difference between the two in secondary measurement the basic definition is that the quantity which is to be measured the measurement it is converted into another quantity and to another form with the help of sensors transducers signal conversion elements which has some relation with the measured quantity this conversion this process of converting the original quantity to be measured into some other form with the help of sensors or transducers or signal conditioners this process is called as translation or conversion and where one signal is getting converted into some other form it constitutes one stage one stage okay so in secondary measurement it involves one stage of translation or conversion it means signal gets converted into one form to other form and it happens only once only one signal conversion takes place not two times or three times okay one signal conversion the example of which we can uh, we can, we we can use here is the pressure measurement with the help of borden tube or bellows now we have already discussed about borden tube and bellows in the sensors transducers section you can please check out those videos okay in the playlist so borden tube basically is a c shaped tube and bellows is a convoluted structure Uh, which can compress or expand and the borden tube also has a certain same feature to it so what happens is that when force or pressure is applied on the borden tube or the bellow there is linear or angular displacement in it the bellows it undergoes compression and expansion and hence the free end it undergoes linear displacement to and fro movement and in the borden tube there is a certain angular displacement to it the free end undergoes angular displacement so here the force or pressure it is getting converted into displacement linear in case of bellows angular displacement in case of borden tube so we have a pointer scale arrangement where a pointer is connected to the free end and the movement of that free end constitutes a movement of the pointer on a calibrated scale so here only one stage is involved only one signal conversion is taking place force or pressure it is getting converted into displacement only one conversion this is secondary measurement then we have is the tertiary measurement so the tertiary measurement there are two stages or the signal conversion happens twice or more than it in some case so the example which i used on rtd thermistor and thermocouple we can use the same example here okay two stages of signal conversion so let us directly see the example let us say we have we are using a rtd or thermistor as i said the thermistor or rtd they have you no know, temperature coefficient of resistance that characteristics it means whenever there is a change in the surrounding temperature or the environment in which they are placed they will exhibit a change in resistance depending on uh, their property whether it has it has a positive temperature coefficient or negative temperature coefficient so the temperature change corresponds to resistance change in rtd and thermistor then that resistance change is utilized by a bridge circuit or a voltage divider circuit whatever we use that resistance change is converted into a change in voltage or current by that bridge circuit or voltage divider circuit this is stage 2 here one signal conversion is taking place temperature to resistance 
in the second stage another signal conversion is taking place resistance change to voltage or current then in stage 3 we have to measure that voltage or current with the help of a voltmeter or ammeter which will the output will be given in a pointer scale or whatever arrangement let's say we have a pointer scale arrangement so that voltage or current is again converted into linear or angular displacement with by the voltmeter and ammeter so three stages of signal conversion here are more than two stage so as, as i said tertiary measurement involves two stages or two translation stages or more than two so first from temperature to resistance change with the help of rtd thermistor resistance change to voltage or current with the help of bridge circuit again from voltage current to linear displacement or angular displacement which is the pointer movement that is voltmeter and ammeter three stages so tertiary measurement it involves two or more stages of conversion then the third and final which is the contact on the basis of contact it is of two types contact type or non contact type so in the contact type measurement the instrument basically the sensor and transducer part it makes contact with the quantity to be measured for example thermometer or borden tube bellows whatever it is it touches the uh, unknown parameter the signal it has some contact with it and in the non contact time measurement it does not make any contact for example the ir infrared thermometer the pyrometer which is used for measurement the intensity of radiation so those are the or we can uh, use the example of uh, the doppler uh, flow meters or uh, we can use uh, the uh, the you know for the measurement of speed of moving vehicles the doppler meter which is used from a distance we can make out whether the the, the velocity of the the speed of the vehicle so all those instruments devices they uh, employ the non contact type measurement technique so here we have discussed the various types of measurement the various ways to classify measurement the basis of uh, three categories we discussed okay then uh, in the upcoming videos we are going to discuss some more concepts related to it and i hope you like this video and please subscribe my channel engineering tutorial for more such videos related to electrical electronics instrumentation and communication engineering have a great day thank you very much